Aloha, everybody, and welcome to the Wild Wahine. This is Kehlani, and this is your astro forecast for this upcoming week. I go through a couple of my favorite transits so that you can understand a little bit about what's going on and work with the energy of the week so you can make fantastic choices in your life. So if you do like this video, just make sure that you like it or you tag people in it and you share it and all that great stuff. You can find me on YouTube at The Wild Wahine. I'm on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter at The Wild Wahine. And so let's jump in for this week. We have three three major things that we're talking about. The first one is starting with Mercury moving into the sign of Gemini. So that is happening today on the 3rd. That is happening all the way until July 11th. So you're probably asking yourself, why is Mercury um, in the sign of Gemini for so long? Well, it's because it's going retrograde, guys. <laughs> so this is our second retrograde of the year. All of the retrogrades this year are happening in air signs. We just had one in Aquarius. If you survived that, you can survive this one. We're gonna have another one um, in the sign of Libra later on in the fall. So with it being in Gemini, this is gonna probably feel a little bit better than the other one simply because Mercury is in its home. It's in its domicile when it's in Gemini. It's coming out of the sign of Taurus where it was kind of sure-footed, where it was thinking, where it was a little bit more logical and, and focused and focusing on things that were like beautiful and saying beautiful words and drawing people in with your words. And now you get to be kind of witty and brainy and not really think about where things land, <laughs> which is kind of fun. Gemini is an air sign. It is also a mutable sign. So it's adaptable. It's changing. Um, it's really great at like taking something that already exists and pivoting it and altering it. And essentially that's what's happening because Taurus creates these solid things. Now you're able to adapt it and change it almost kind of like this Rubik's cube. And that's just totally dating me because that's like so long ago like that kind of energy of like twisting it around and trying to find the colors and organizing it that is kind of that mercurial energy when it's in the sign of Gemini so some of the things that mercury rules is our mind um, the way that we gather information learning but more like short-term learning like short courses um, things that where we get like certification has to do with technology has to do with communication and how we speak with each other learning languages organization and our systems like how we are organizing our life if we have an analog planner do we use a digital planner all of our technology like our cell phones and our cars and you know our smart TVs and all of those kind of technical things also trade and commerce so if you have a business where you're selling things or you're buying things also if you have a business where you're buying raw materials and you're transforming them into something else and selling them with this mercurial energy <laughs> um, people are good talkers they're funny there's a lot of like comedy with this um, very witty kind of humor um, really kind of brainy sense um, you're really like interpreting information and interpreting the world through your brain, not necessarily through the heart. So it's a shift in the way that we were relating to people when um, Mercury was in the sign of Taurus. It, now it's more brain-based. It's really facts over feelings right now. Like, are, does this make sense? I'm going to do my research before I, before I decide that I want to do this. I'm going to research all 10 things and then I'll decide what I want to do. It's a little less intuitive in that sense. And I think that there's like an interesting dichotomy between like intuition and high intelligence. You know like I mean is it possible for like really high intelligence to feel or almost be like its intuition is intuition super high intelligence kind of reminds me a little bit of like Sherlock Holmes the BBC uh, TV series where he just was so detail oriented and could see so many things sometimes it seemed as if he was intuitive there is this interesting like line between intuition and, and, and intelligence um, and, and kind of being able to pay gr you know great attention to detail that sounds like a video that I want to do hmm. it has this jack-of-all-trades energy like I'm able to do lots of different things I'm spinning all the plates it's movement because air is movement so where we maybe have been feeling like a little bit more stuck because that's what we needed you know we're still the sun is still in Taurus now we're starting to shift and what's shifting first is our minds we're starting to shift in a way in terms of how we think of things and then when Venus goes into Gemini we're shifting what our heart wants as well some of the things that can be a little bit um, challenging with Mercury in Gemini can be just um, hard to focus on one thing sometimes you know one thing does need our attention sometimes we need to hyper focus on one thing when you're kind of flittering around like a bee or a butterfly from thing to thing to thing it might feel really difficult right now to focus on that one thing um so you're just going to have to think about like what are the three things that are the most important and i'm going to go back and forth with these three things so hyper focus might be a little weak right now but focusing on a couple of things you just give yourself limited choices like that to me is like the mantra 
mantra of like anybody that has like Gemini placements or just like a lot of, you know, just, just that mercurial energy is just limited choices, you know, so that you can actually see things through to completion, but you still feel like you have a choice and you can bounce around on lots of things. That's super important. <laughs> um, loose links, loose lips sink ships. Okay, how many times did I have to say that? <laughs> so just like secret keepers, oath keepers right now, just a little bit rough, you know? Um, you know, this energy loves to talk. It loves to share information. It loves to hear what you have to say. It loves to shock and be funny. So if you told your really good friend or your coworker something that you wanted it to be private, it's probably not gonna be private. So I would probably keep my secrets to myself unless it was something that you didn't mind for it to get out because this isn't really a great secret keeping time. Not really. Like if you put something out there, probably everybody's going to know your business. This is quality also to this energy that where it, there is a dual quality too. So with this energy, when the high is high, it feels really good. You're excited, you're energized, you're going from one thing to another. But then when the low is low, it can get quite low. It can be very reclusive. It can be very dark in that space. So you know, kind of swinging between the highs and the lows can happen a lot during this time. And because there's so much energy in the sense of it going from, you know, place to place to place to place, sometimes you can have a lot of petering out and you can get tired. And when you get tired with like all of that mental energy, sometimes that can lead into irritability and that can also lead into moodiness. So you just want to make sure that you're pacing yourself as your mind is racing because your body and everything else is going to get up and go with that, especially when the sun moves into Gemini. But right now the sun is in Taurus and it just kind of sort of wants to like, eat grapes and while you know reclining and your mind is like I gotta do this I gotta do this gotta, and that can feel kind of weird you know because the body's not up and doing it so things that you want to do you want to buy your tech you want to buy new phones your computer and all of those things cars transportation a new journal uh, these are things that we don't really want to do during the retrograde if we do have to do these things during retrograde we just want to make sure that we're looking at all of the details we're just making sure that we have everything in place because if we don't it's gonna be a challenge for sure. There's gonna be a lot of travel probably right now. You know, when you look at the month, the first couple, two weeks, you know, have this kind of buzzy, fun energy. And then the last two weeks, it, the energy shifts a little bit with the retrograde. So if you're going out there and you're traveling, you're doing all of that, that's fine. But I definitely think like towards the end of the month, it's gonna kind of come to a little bit of a halt. And a lot of the freedoms that we thought we had might be pulled back a bit really good time for applying for aid for getting um, for applying for a loan or anything anything that's paperwork oriented student loans anything like that get all that stuff done now get your taxes done you're crunching your numbers billing whatever it is that you have to get done use these couple of weeks before retrograde season um, <laughs> happens to get this stuff done that's so important so then you can just avoid some of the kinks and the weird things you can start things during a retrograde kind of not the best time um really good time for retrogrades like I was saying in vi video last week is to kind of hone in what you already started so my goal is to get you guys to start the things that you need to start to get the paperwork done to get all that stuff done now so when retrograde happens and it's not already done that's fine because you're just going back over you're crossing your eyes you're dotting your T's you're not starting something new so now we're going into um, Venus trining Pluto uh, that happens on the 6th we're gonna be feeling that on the 4th all the way to the 8th um, so when Venus which is our connection um, our relationships our love our harmony and Pluto is all about transformation it has to do with power it has to do with intimacy with things that are dark and things that are taboo it's forming a trine so a trine is of a positive aspect it usually brings about something that's lovely for us and some of the things that are going to pop up during this time have to do with things that we're deeply passionate about and things that we love and care about and how we're allowing the things or and specifically our relationships because it is Venus uh, transform us and transform the way that we want to do things in our life we definitely can come into contact with some Somebody, especially in a relationship sense could be at work could be like a love relationship and when I say relationships is always very broad it means any relationship that you have with another human attracting people into our lives that actually transform us um, usually for the positive doesn't necessarily mean it always feels good it has to do with like risking everything for love and, and just or for connection or for whatever that thing is that you desire it could be your career goal it could be a creative project really putting everything into it this is a good time for investing Pluto a lot of times has to do with like other people's money or money or shared money and shared resources so people coming together or people crowdfunding for your project really good time to have that Pluto oftentimes is secretive things things that are hidden and if they're Venusians hidden things they're things that you're deeply passionate about and deep things that you love but you've kept hidden so that you're kind of like bringing them out to the surface and asking for support and community with that um some of the challenging things because there's always a challenge with these aspects uh could be power struggles this big narc energy sometimes like gaslighting somebody that's really like kind of pulling a power play 
play people that might be manipulating you in some way or but they're using love and connection and relationships to manipulate you so um, somebody that has just like is dealing with a lot of jealousy um, a lot of insecurity so a couple of questions that I have is like what are the what things that you need to transform in your relationships how do you want to transform things um, where might you be being manipulated in your relationships or where are you manipulating someone else in your relationships and how can that be transformed and also what are the things that need to be unearthed in your relationships what are the things that need a big shift next up we have Venus moving into the sign of Gemini that's happening on the 8th that's happening for about three weeks so we have Mercury our mind you know in Gemini and so Venus which was in her home so she had lots of dignity lots of power you know in Taurus she's losing a little bit of that you know it's like she's not in her home but she's like in her best friend's home kind of like watching her cat for the weekend she's not like bringing necessarily all of her gifts but it is a friend's house it is a place where she likes to be it's a place where she can still do some of her magic she likes bringing like harmony um, and, and pleasure to spaces it's a really good time to communicate and talk about things and bring some really good like balance um, with some levity especially if things have been kind of heavy in those relationships like now's the time to have some really good communication and harmonizing things um, but the words are coming out like you finally are able to find your words and say the thing that you wanted to say in a really good way that's kind of funny that just allows for that natural connection to happen because Gemini wants connection it definitely I mean it does like kind of like to push up against things and to challenge but at the end of the day they like connection and Venus is all about like you know how can I connect and, and harmonize and make things beautiful making good deals building partnerships great time to you know have somebody come on um, to your business or to take on a partner in your business or do some sort of affiliate programming with the right people in your business a really great time to put a call out for those types of things and draw those people in because remember Venusian energy is all about drawing things to in terms of relationships if you're single or if you're with somebody um, you know just being attracted to people's mind being attracted to like um, how they think first as opposed to how they visually are finding the mind and finding someone's jokes finding someone's memes finding someone's wittiness or their intelligence like like that's gonna be the thing that's attracting you to the person as opposed to per se like their physically how they look so these might be like connections that are built online connections that are built on technology first like like connecting with people romantically through words through the written word and then kind of meeting them in a physical way it's about friendships that blossom into romances so you guys let me know if you like fall in love with your like best friend or something because <laughs> I want to know that information or even finding more of a friendship in your love relationship if you kind of been just being mom and dad and not really spending a lot of time together as is a lot of times couples do when they have kids like going out and having fun just like going to the fair you know going roller skating doing something fun together as a couple that just reminds you of what it was like before the kids before the responsibility this is light energy so it's definitely just about having fun and enjoying and and bringing the levity to heavy situations some of the challenges with this particular energy is that you can be very easily distracted because it is light energy so it's not going to want to go too too deep in things so because things flip and flutter you're going from one point to another and and um, you're, you're kind of like spinning all the plates. That can be exhausting. That can be tiring. Not having the staying power in a situation, not being able to kind of sort of stick the landing, that can be somewhat of a challenge. When you're pollinating 100 flowers as opposed to pollinating one flower, it's just taking a lot of time. You're not really using that economy of movement, um, so to speak. So it's exhausting. And so sometimes you just want to check out of the whole situation so ghosting tends to be something that happens um largely because a person is non-committal or they're exhausted because they're just been you know given the love everywhere and they just are burnt out and they need time to themselves to be quite honest um so you know that's something that is challenging because obviously if you're the one that's ghosted that doesn't feel so good when you have all these choices when it's mutable it's like i could do this i could do this i could do this i could buy this i could buy this i could buy this and then you will waste so much time in your decision making and this could be with people like i could date this person i could date this person i could date this person i could take this job or this job or this job i could take on this partner this partner or this partner all of those things is like hard sometimes to make those decisions so hopefully you guys um, got something from this astro forecast for this upcoming week and you can use this energy if you have any questions make sure you put them in the comments below um, again if you are interested in booking a consult for a natal chart or doing a tarot reading or something like that you can reach me at www.thewildwahine.as.me um, I always do this video once a week on a Monday and then I have a secondary video that I usually have up on my YouTube channel later on in the week so definitely check me out on YouTube um, 
because I'm growing there. <laughs> and I will see you guys later. Aloha. Bye.